Wright. Here, Executive Director Manuel Almira. I'm here. Court Counsel, Greg Pickens. Here. We have a panel.
Thank you, Chair of the uh, Commission, for that. Thank you. Um, now we are going to have our executive session. Uh, attendees will be Commissioners Sicklin, Enright, Anderson, Richards, and Walden, along with our Executive Director, Daniel Almira, Court Attorney Greg Kicken, Court Attorney Don McNeil, Attorney Robert Wilkins, and Court Reporter Susan Pruden. So we'll
know that this letter is about to go out to the Department of Transportation. So therefore, I need the board's approval. Everybody read the letter, I assume. No, I'm reading it right now as we speak oh. about just to see if it's... Uh, so we'll pull H13 and we are pulling H9. That is correct. And, uh, are we, were we doing a meeting on our page? Do we need to get any proposals, I guess? I'm sorry. H12, H12. Okay, that H12 is still in the consent and Go out with new bids. The way the bids were good. Or? Well, no, it's just that the way it was written, and I, I much prefer for our uh, poll or our attorney to uh, explain why we are having an H12. When the item was sent out, while the content inside was correct and asked for an evaluation of the recipients, the cover sheet referred to it as a request for bid rather than a request for proposal. So in order to avoid any problems, we would just like to reissue it, basically just changing the cover sheet. Okay. Uh, actually, I, I, I would like to restructure it as a straight uh, request for bid because we know the court knows exactly what they want done. There isn't any question about how the job is going to be done or um, so, so it would go out as a request for bid, but it would be using a request for bid, a uh, proper request for bid form. Did it go out as a request for bid? It went out as a request for proposal. It could be, it could be accepted as is, but um, we, uh, we would prefer to have it go out as a request. So it's going to go out as a request for bid. I, I'm sorry. It's going out as a request for bid. It went out as a request for bid, but it used some request for proposal language in it. So we just want to clean that up. It could be accepted as it is, um, according to the low bidder. But um, you, you don't want to be fair on the side of caution. I, I, right, and the, the painting, of course, needs to be done, but it's not an emergency. So, uh, but the the bids that were received um, were not publicly open, and they're not public record. So I, I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that, and they don't uh, release any of the bids or the bid information to third parties because that has a tendency to. Uh, kind of squash bidding it if uh, third parties think that we're going to go out for bids and then pull them back and go out for them again. And that's why the county, most of the counties do it that way now. They don't have public bid openings. Uh, the bids are, are not publicly open and uh, the port adopted that practice and, and that practice is in force. So I just wanted to remind everyone of that, that we don't go, that we don't release to anyone, including other bidders, what, uh, what bids have been. So did you have any follow-up comments on that? I will follow the board. Turn to your recommendation. Yeah. All right, so um, do we still want to uh, pull H13? Yes, um, because uh, we're discussion. Okay. So do we want to make I move that the agenda as modified be approved, which is pull H9, pull H13. H13, yes, that's the motion. Three.
expand on this a little bit, but there was a situation where we donated $200 to the St. George Center and the purchase of one event ticket in the amount of $100 to each to the Homeless Coalition of Palm Beach. Uh, apparently there was somewhat of a confusion and therefore we want to bring it back so that there's clarification. So Karen, if you can explain this. I'll just add a little to that. Um, the In the body of the cover sheet, we removed the one event ticket for $100 to the Homeless Coalition. It did, however, inadvertently not get removed in the action item. So we will be asking for approval of the $200 donation for St. George's Center, and we will be removing the one ticket for $100 to the Homeless Coalition. Okay. And uh, there's a public comment on that. Hi, my name is Suzanne Crawford, and I'm on one of the board members at St. George's, and this is Jane Counts, who's also on the board at St. George's. We're sorry about any problem with the homeless coalition, although we don't we don't answer to them, but um, we do think they're a good organization. And the same thing happened to me at that luncheon as well. So if that makes you feel better. Um, so really what we have for you are some packets about St. George's because what we want to propose is that um, we have a corporate sponsorship at our at St. George's, which means that em employees from an organization come and serve lunch once a month and then they donate $250. And then that way we have a working relationship with you and not just give us money relationship. Um, and we're also in Riviera Beach and you know and it, one of I just heard today that one of our guests is now an employee of the court, which that always makes us feel good when we hear that someone that's homeless is employed and, you know. That's great. Yeah, we're very happy. And we have other organizations that also participate in this corporate um, lunch program that we have, and that's FPL. Um, let me check my notes. Um, I can't speak off the top of my head. Uh, I know, I could. Um, Lockheed Martin, FPL, AB Works, UBS, they come every month. Um, Discover the Palm Beaches is a marketing um, company for Palm Beach County, and um, Garing Insurance Company, and they're out of Palm Beach Gardens. So, we hope you'll think about this. Thank you for coming today. Sure. Thank you.
subject to the uh, Department of Transportation on the railroad, and it's called Creasy. I believe I'm uh, pronouncing that correct, although you are close enough. Yeah, maybe more like Chrysler. <coughs> anyway, uh, we, the board, approved a, a grant writing and a grant application that uh, Trans Systems has already uh, finished. Tomorrow is the deadline. What this grant would certainly need would be to be enhanced by letters of recommendations from entities that will be using our rail. Not the least of which, of course, the city, and they have, I believe, have already submitted uh, a, um, a, a letter of uh, recommendation, and also various others have already. It just on us that we, we have submitted a letter. So uh, we went ahead, uh, this was yesterday when we came across that information, uh, we went ahead and Carl, uh, along with uh, Trans Systems, went ahead and composed the letter that is in front of you. This one I went ahead and I circulated it to all of you, and you've probably seen it now for the first time, or maybe you were able to read it. It's just simply a letter of support that will go to the Honorable uh, Elaine Chow, who is the head of the U.S. Department of Transportation. So, because it is a board action, I wanted to have all board members be aware that the letter has been drafted and the letter can, will go out tomorrow if approved. And that's all we're at. So I'm over. Excuse me for discussion. If it 
chair wants to limit the time that the chair is provided by the people. So I think we should, that should not be an issue. Uh, well, on that, I think the county commission, basically what happens there, <coughs> we want to be different, that's fine. But if we allow myself just to put anything on the agenda that I want without a majority approving it, Right, I wouldn't do that. So the county, I think the chair and the administrator basically go over the agenda, and then if there's something that she wants on there, they sometimes will poll the commission. So I don't feel the same as Wayne does that any commissioner can just stick anything on the agenda they want. That's ridiculous because there could be, you know, 20 things that. Well, I'm just saying, you know, people could take advantage of that
the jobs, as well as the economic development that we support, Aid in Palm Beach County. I don't think this was a haphazard item that was placed on to learn about what we might possibly do. Now keep in mind, a motion was already made that we would not tax. This was just an exploratory, just to make sure, because I don't see anybody that made, you know, it, it just wasn't a good judiciary uh, act in which, you know, and then what's that haphazard, but I digress, but I'll just take this offline, thank you. Um, I just want to say two things. First, uh, my understanding from years that I've been here, Wayne and Blair, uh, what normally happens, the chair and executive director and staff, they get together and they do the agenda. Now, my understanding, and I never had a problem with anyone throwing their own agenda, but what we've done in the past, if there are two commissioners who want something on the agenda, it should be able to go there. Uh, I don't see no big deal in all of this. Because at the end of the day, you're going to have to vote for it anyway. Vote it down, vote it up, or vote, not vote at all. So uh, I don't see all the written law and why we're going back to the board. So the next time that the commissioner wants to put something on, as far as I'm concerned, let them put it on. And, and I'm pretty sure that if, if, if you all want to go hotline, and, uh, I'm pretty sure that person would get another vote because you don't have my vote or you don't have Wayne vote because he doesn't care if you put it on or not because at the end of the day they have to vote on it. So uh, I don't think we should even have to deal with this anymore. But with the letter, don't forget, the letter is fine. Just put a comma out the chairperson, take most out. That's not getting around. Most has to come out and put the. So um, moving on, maybe it might be good for the next commission meeting if somebody could spend 30 seconds. That, explaining the protocol behind things being on the agenda. Do we follow the county or do we have our own method? And that way everybody would understand the process. We can certainly run that back and I certainly welcome uh, Mr. or Commissioner Joe Anderson's uh, invitation to take this offline. Uh, I think he's going to uh, he and I will have a very productive uh, conversation. Great. So um, we're on to G2 now. Yes. Uh, the G2 is a certification of a certificate of recognition. For that, I'd like to Mr. Ken Hearn. Come on. Come on. Person who's been here for 20 years and the other one has been here for five. Mr. 
Jericho Square. It's been here for 20 years. And Yanni, Yanni, there you go. And Yanni, it's been here for five. So please go up. Materials. 
Now the story is about seven minutes long, but we're not gonna make you guys watch all seven minutes. If you wanna watch, you can go on the website. We've shortened it for you and we wanna play it for you just so you ha have an idea of what we're working on. exactly what goes on here at the port. Well, from now on, we're going to be giving you an inside look at the businesses operating at the port of Palm Beach. Our new tenant spotlight segment is aimed at better helping you understand the local maritime industry. This month, we are featuring a company called South Florida Materials, which operates the diesel fuel and asphalt terminal located just west of the Sky Pass Bridge. My name is Eduardo Palenzuela. I am the terminal manager for South Florida Materials Port. I manage the facility and that everything comes in and everything goes out. Eduardo Valenzuela has spent the last 16 years operating the liquid asphalt and diesel fuel terminal at the Port of Palm Beach, a location he says he wouldn't give up. The is centrally located. This drone video gives you a better idea of what the terminal looks like. The big white tanks are for storing diesel fuel, the capacity for both 150,000 barrels. Then you got the silver tanks that hold the liquid asphalt. All of the tanks combined can hold 200,000 barrels of liquid asphalt. Valenzuela says the liquid asphalt stored in the tanks come from refineries all over the U.S. and some of the loads even come from foreign countries. The liquid asphalt is used to build or refurbish uh, roads on, on the uh, Department of Transportation. So anytime you drive on 95 or the turnpike, uh, Asphalt is what is used to, uh, to surface the, uh, the road. Asphalt is also used to surface parking lots, playing courts, and for roofing projects. It's transported to the port by rail car or by barge. This aerial shot captured when a load of liquid asphalt arrived at the port. The name of the barge is Arcadia. The Arcadia is bringing us a, a load of asphalt. And as you can see, it is connected to a hose. system which is connected to our tanks in the terminal which is about half a mile away. Valenzuela says the underground pipelines that are used to transport the product from the dock to the terminal are tested once a year per the United States Coast Guard requirements. As for these metal pipes in the tank farm, Valenzuela says employees inspect them every day to make sure the pipes are not leaking. Employees are all very well trained in how to safely handle the product. Especially since the temperature of the asphalt can range between 300 to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. After storage, the asphalt is transferred from the tanks to a tanker truck. distributed to the company's customers. Thank you for watching, and we hope you'll join us again next time we showcase another one of our port tenants. So that's just a short version. We have a longer version online. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun shooting it. And um, the, the longer version actually shows how we have a lab in the port, and they test the asphalt. So it shows the importance of making sure that all the asphalt leaving the, the port of Palm Beach is safe for the road. So anyway, we wanted to share that with you and our next project will be with uh, Florida Sugar and Molasses Exchange. Thank you very much. One of the reasons why we went ahead and hired her. <laughs> many, many more, but that's, that's one of them. Uh, commissioners, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, and jump into the uh, events. The AAPA uh, meeting just uh, finished yesterday. I bring that up because the new chairman, uh, Chris Connors, will be visiting me on either November the 4th or the 5th. Uh, he wants to make sure that we still continue to be clever. Uh, there's plenty uh, of information that I'd like to share with him. Uh, as we all know, the organization is not what it used to be. Uh, others, that, uh, as a reminder, I believe is in the next uh, page, and that is the upcoming, um, there it is, the Latin American Congress of Ports in Miami. That's in November the 19th through the 21st. And uh, with that, commissioners, if you have any other questions, uh, I'm here. Otherwise, I'm going to turn it over to our new engineer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
Good evening, commissioners. Uh, first project I want to update you on is the MLB demolition and cargo area. I think you realize that's been held up waiting on FPL. I'm happy to report the FPL has begun um, switching of power from the transformers to the underground. And as soon as that's complete, we'll be moving on with the removal of the aerial and then start the project back up. One of the things I want you to understand is that this time West Construction, uh, when they started with the delays of FPL, so it's 37 days ahead of schedule. West Construction, the project management team, certainly should be commended for their hard work and efforts in completing this project ahead of schedule. I'm soon once, sure once we turn it back over to them, the same thing will happen. They've also allowed us to use that area for staging and supplies for the Bahama relief efforts. And uh, their billings remain, remain unchanged since they have been working at 89%. I also want to thank Jim Moore with Jacobs who's been great help to bring me up to speed on this project and making sure I understand all the history as we move forward. Uh, the next project I'll let you date, John, is the Birth One Bulkhead project. Uh, this project is moving along well. As you can see, there's a lot more to look at today. We have the sheet piling completed and the installation of the concrete cap is starting soon. Uh, there is work going on that you can't see right now, which is underwater staging for the rebar hangers, etc. By next week, you'll see concrete going in, and uh, we'll move forward with that. We also have, in the next picture, I think, the uh, prop wash wall. That protects uh, Cracker Boy Marina and their vessels from prop wash when our vessels take off and leave from that port, or from that berth, and that is completed also. This contractor did suffer a few delays from being uh, sent out of here when we went to Condition Zulu for Hurricane Dorian, but we expect the completion date to be about September 15th. <laughs> And uh, I also really appreciate the immediate strong working relationship with uh, Casey Long and the team from Johnson Brothers uh, that I inherited from my predecessor. Next project I want to update you on is quite exciting. Uh, we call these girls the mermaids. They're our uh, subcontractor that did the coral relocation. In 2000, the U.S. Coral Reef Task Force adopted a national action plan. Uh, and with guidance from the U.S. Coral Reef Task Force, the FDEP, Florida Department of Environmental Protection, and the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission coordinated with the formation of a team of interagency and non-agency marine resource professionals, scientists, resource users, and other stakeholders. This team known as the South Florida Coral Reef, Southeast Florida Coral Reef Initiative uh, gathered in 2003 for the first meetings to develop local action strategies targeting coral reefs and the associated reef resources from Miami-Dade, Broward, Palm Beach, and Martin Counties to improve the coordination of technical and financial support for the conservation and management of coral reefs. I'm proud to announce that this month the Port of Palm Beach joined this organization along with our sister ports, Port of Miami and Port Everglades to strengthen our commitment to the protection of our marine environment, which in part makes Palm Beach the destination it's become. The Port of Palm Beach has an excellent record of environmental awareness and uh, in the pictures you see some of the coral relocation going on where we removed over a thousand corals from bulkheads prior to reconstruction and relocated them to an artificial reef offshore. Next project I'll just touch base quickly on is do you see the blue area with the yellow in the middle? That is the shoal that's going to be subject to emergency dredging. We did hold the pre-construction conference for that emergency dredging portion of the work here in uh, the commission room, the board room. Uh, unfortunately, we know the delays on the dredge. One of the things that's interesting is our dredging is complicated by the fact that there's really only two dredges on the east coast of the United States that can do our kind of dredging. Um, many of the team professionals from the Corps of Engineers are people I've worked with in the past. It's a pleasure to work with them. Again, they've been friends of mine from previous projects. We will be holding another uh, pre-construction conference November 1st on the primary dredging. This will be about a three-day project. Then they'll be back in uh, Jacksonville. We'll come back in a few weeks later uh, as part of the regular project to our entire harbor and turning basin. Uh, next one I want to update you on is the pro proposed pasture loading bridge. You've seen this picture before. When, when I came on board and started working with ECF consultants, I, I recognized that I have significant experience in passenger loading bridges. I actually purchased the first passenger loading bridges at Port Everglades that were ever used to, use, to load uh, passenger ships. With that information, the experience I had, I felt it was a time well spent that we traveled to Port Everglades and look at some of their very complicated loading bridges as opposed to our very simple bridge and give ECF an idea of what can be accomplished with a loading bridge if it's needed. Uh, some due diligence we wanted to take uh, along with a few time from the ECF. 
none of that's going to make any changes without full staff concurrence. Uh, so far, it's been a pleasure to work and get to know ECF, and I expect a very close working relationship is going to develop quickly with them. My goal is to come back in the next commission meeting with a work order for ECF to move forward on the design of our new passenger loading bridge. Uh, briefly, just in closing, I want to thank the Port Staff and Port Commission for welcoming me to this position. I look forward to a long and rewarding relationship with this great team. I feel lucky to be involved with such a dedicated group of professionals, and I hope my experience and knowledge makes a noticeable contribution to the board. Thank you very much. Thank you. meeting, board staff was notified by county parks officials that they would not be participating in a competitive proposal uh, as requested by the board. However, are standing by to restart discussions should the city uh, port discussions prove unfavorable. Uh, most recently, board staff escorted uh, Riviera Beach City Manager Jonathan Evans uh, to the island this morning for a tour of the property, and he is here with us today to, for a quick presentation and to answer your questions. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners and members of the public. Certainly it's an opportunity here that the city of Riviera Beach believes is a very important um, element to not just Riviera Beach, but also Palm Beach County. And having an opportunity to go to the site today with Assistant City Manager Jacobs, we stand prepared, eager, and willing to see these historic structures come back to life and actually see the public being able to utilize these spaces because I'm a firm believer that we have a moral and ethical obligation to protect and preserve the quality of life that's uniformly enjoyed here in Palm Beach County but to allow for access and preserve history for future generations as generations before us have done. So the first slide that we have is, or the topic that we'll be talking about is the letter of interest that the city of Riviera Beach has submitted to the court for consideration. This is pursuant to the direction that has been provided to me by the council on two different occasions. One being obviously the discussions that we had in the court on September 30th, and then a follow-up conversation that we did have with the board um, on October 5th. The board laid out some areas that they would like for staff to focus on as part of this particular proposal. And so I'll go over some of the items that are contained in the uh, letter of interest. For one, we have that the city's interest really is historical preservation and conservation. Um, there's a lot of speculation and a lot of information out there that you know the city wants to see a Ferris wheel on this particular parcel and make it Universal Studios here in South Florida. That is not remotely even close to what our intentions are. Our intentions is to see those structures be brought back to life to allow for families, friends, neighbors to be able to utilize that space as it is probably some of the most serene views in the country uh, that we have to, to benefit from. We really see the value of ecotourism, uh, allowing for adults and youth educational activities to be a priority there, really focusing on the marine science. We are very <coughs> fortunate to live on the Treasure Coast, and I believe that we need to do everything to ensure that folks have access to the water and marine science and ecological education. The Lake Worth Lagoon is like no other water body um, throughout the country for that matter. People travel here 
from all over the world to spend a couple days with us to be able to dive under the Blue Heron Bridge or snorkel around Peanut Island. So it's an immense opportunity that I believe that if we work together to promote and to educate and to inform and advocate for ecotourism, it can certainly be successful. We do want to see uh, passive recreation. We want to see weddings, nature walks, um, opportunities for people to be able to spend a couple hours on an island without having to jump on a plane and go through customs and go through go to another country. Um, I see that there is copious amounts of opportunities where folks can have a beautiful wedding on an island and then go over to the Riviera Beach Marina where we'll work out a favorable agreement for them and they can utilize the, the banquet area. But there's not many places that you can go to experience a tropical oasis uh, here in your backyard and so we certainly see that there is a lot of opportunities to better promote and to better utilize that space. The next element is looking at the opportunity to commence negotiations to reach an agreement to see the 4.3 acres and 36 acres that are currently under the auspice of the county merge. The city is interested in being a long-standing partner and has the capabilities and wherewithal and experience to be able to work uh, not just on the 4.3 acres, but actually work on the, uh, the 36 acres that the court and the county have an agreement with. So we certainly are interested in that agreement and from conversations and information that I've researched that the county does want to see that, to, or the, the court does want to see those two elements fused. Also, we would begin re researching grant funding opportunities for the restoration of the facilities on the island. We've had a couple of internal conversations with grant writers uh, that are poised and ready to assist um, and we're looking for um, other opportunities to work with other agencies that are willing to, to move forward in the same direction as the city. Uh, I envision that in the event that the port wants to partner with the city to move this particular item forward that we will have a staff person that will be assigned that this project will be a project that they will monitor on a daily basis as to what's going on, tracking grants, making sure that we're coordinating if there's fundraising events, communicating to both the port on activities that the city's planning or what the city's doing, and vice versa, informing the board and administration. And this particular position would reside in the city manager's office and be a critical uh, piece to making sure we move this particular item forward. Um, we also will begin the conversations with our state and federal lobbyists to see if there's opportunities on the state and federal level for the purposes of historic preservation, for any monies to make some improvements to some of the site, and to effectively help us breathe life back into this facility. Uh, if we continue on, one of the things we do want to aggressively pursue partnerships with our private sector um, folks to assist in the renovation of the Coast Guard Station and the Kennedy Bunker. I really do believe um, that once folks know that it's the intent of the port, the city, and whomever else to see these facilities come back to life, that we will get support. Uh, right now, it's one of those things that people are not acutely aware of, but once the conversations happen um, and there's a unified front to get folks involved, I find it hard to believe that here in Palm Beach County, one of the most diverse and one of the most affluent counties in the state of Florida that we will not find a situation where people would be interested in assisting in this endeavor. We'd like to identify and or create a nonprofit entity that would serve as a museum or educational uh, experience to allow for the public to be able to utilize that site. We've already had the conversations about possibility of a curator to work with our local school district. How can we get um, some of our young people on the island throughout Palm Beach County? I think there's a profound opportunity to work with the school district. Some of these young people will never put their foot on an island until they're an adult and they go on a vacation. And how powerful of an opportunity we have to say, this is in your backyard and you can conceivably kayak from your backyard to this island and be able to enjoy some of the most beautiful views that are uh, available here in Palm Beach County and, and the world for that matter. We also would like to discuss uh, economic development opportunities with joiner mutual benefit to work with the port on your expansion endeavors. 
We know that the port desires to grow and we want you to grow because the more product that you move out of this particular port, the more uh, jobs you create, and we still want you to continue to move up on the ladder to be able to get state and federal funding. So we understand that and the board has not identified specific parcels, but I would hope as part of the due diligence period, we can have that discussion. I've had some good conversations with some elected officials that understand that the poor success is the city's success and vice versa. And we want to see uh, continued growth and activities to happen here because you are paying above minimum wage, you are paying livable wages. And so it's important for us to continue to partner with you all to see those goals accomplished and ultimately move the number of Riviera Beach residents that uh, work for the port. Uh, we'd like to create a business plan, a performance operational plan. I know one of the things that were identified in the agreement is that the county was to provide you with an operational plan with respect to what the big picture um, elements are and a recreational plan. We're in the process right now and we haven't even had our first meeting with respect to a overall recreational master plan and if the board would indulge the city to participate in this process we would like to incorporate that analysis as part of the overall uh, scope because i think if we had consultants that are and the consulting company is acom i believe if we have folks that focus on recreational activities that come in and take a look at the island and look at all the parks throughout the county and say, what is unique about this? How can we utilize this in a space that brings the community together? And understanding that we wanna be good neighbors to all the surrounding communities. We wanna protect the uh, serene, you know, quietness and the peace and, the, and tranquility that a lot of people, people enjoy. But it's <coughs> such a benefit to have some activities on that island. And so we would like to incorporate that in the overall master plan for the Riviera Beach Parks. And this same firm is working with Wellington and other communities to look at parks master planning. As we continue, one of the things we'd like to obtain is estimates and quotes on the cost for some of the capital projects to be able to uh, make this project come to fruition. Obviously, we know that construction costs consistently go up. And obviously, if you're constructing on an island, um, there is increased costs associated with that. But more so, I really do believe when we engage our developers and our businesses and our uh, agencies to say, this is an opportunity for you to be part of something special, something that's unique, something that has a piece of American history to it, um, we will get a situation where we'll see price breaks or even in-kind contribution. Most of that uh, structure is gonna need a lot of uh, mason, or not masonry work, carpentry work. So it's gonna be significantly cheaper than your traditional construction. So we anticipate that there will be partners and folks that will come to the table. I've fielded a lot of phone calls of people that are interested in the event that we're successful in being able to move forward, that they would assist and participate. Uh, one of the challenges that we have is the ordinance that stipulates um, exactly uh, what the conditions are and how the parcel is to be utilized. One of the things that we would like to do is to reach out to our partners at Palm Beach County and have the discussion, is there conceivably any concessions that could be made to be able to allow for us to generate some type of revenue to offset operational costs? We're not looking for a situation where it becomes a major profit center and you know it becomes something where you're charging $45 a ticket and it's paying for multiple departments. We would like to see if we have a curator, we have a museum operation on there, that there could be some type of element that allows for us to generate some type of revenue to continue to maintain and operate the operations, but also you know, the upkeep of the, the landscaping, the docks, et cetera. Those are the things that we would like to have uh, discussions with the county as the property is still in uh, unincorporated uh, Palm Beach County. So some of the next steps that I believe, and just jotting these items down, if accepted, we would commence a due diligence process that we anticipate would probably be 90 days, and I only say 90 days because we have the holidays that will soon be upon us, but that we would sit down with your staff and negotiate the terms and conditions of, uh, of an agreement, working with the city council as well, and then ultimately having a joint meeting to work out some of the nuances that we may 
need. I'd like for us to exploit opportunities to collaborate jointly with Palm Beach County and other municipalities. I think there is an opportunity for us to have a joint meeting if all parties agree that the intention is to promote ecotourism, to restore those facilities. You know, like I said earlier, what is good for Port of Palm Beach is good for Riviera Beach. And I think it is uh, important for our municipal partners and our county partners to have a proverbial seat at the table. And we want them to have a seat at the table, but we want to have the goal of moving forward in a productive fashion and not look at what the obstacles are, the challenges, but what the opportunities are. Uh, a moment ago, before I had the opportunity to address you, I went in and I Googled Riviera Beach. And then if you Google Riviera Beach and you hit images, the first selection for images comes up is Peanut Island because it's synonymous to who we are. It's ingrained in our fiber of who we are as a community. And so I think not really moving forward from the city standpoint to demand a proverbial seat at the table or to lead in the discussion would be disingenuous on our part, and that's why I'm here uh, before you today. We want to encourage nonprofit, private sector um, folks to sit down and let's have a facilitated discussion. Let's bring out you know, a facilitator, let's have uh, dry erase board, let's throw out any ideas and concepts and work in collaboration so when we come up with what a plan is, we can make sure that everyone is committed to playing a significant role to understand what some of the challenges are but work through some of the challenges. We know that this is a Herculean task for any one entity, but we are poised and prepared to work with individuals or private sector form, firms or government entities to move this forward. And so we're certainly excited about uh, what lies ahead. I've talked about the conversation with other agencies and how important that is, and we would certainly facilitate that within that 90-day period, and then ultimately start the discussions with uh, Palm Beach County on the staff level to see what concessions can be made or what modifications can be considered as part of some of the uses and the ordinance that stipulates and restricts some of the activities that are happening. And the, the last uh, slide that I have here is, I think it's important, and when we look at the significance of this parcel, and I thought that President Kennedy uh, eloquently said it best, and so my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And I think when you have a quote as powerful as that, as you get ready to enter bunker, or you visit the island and understand the historic significance of what our country had gone through and was going through, and that the world would have been profoundly different if things would have changed. Uh, we have an opportunity to allow for young people, uh, senior citizens, um, middle-aged folks to understand that a piece of American history is in our backyard. And we are part of the group that decided to say, it's a value not only to Palm Beach County, not only the state of Florida, but the nation and the world we live in. Um, and to have the opportunity to bring this back to life is something that we're certainly eager and enthusiastic about. And so um, I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for your attention. Um, uh, thank you for uh, the opportunity, uh, Andy and his team, to work with us to assist us in um, preparing for this opportunity as they feel the questions and phone calls and taking this out on the tour. Uh, we certainly feel that we have an excellent partnership with um, the port staff as well as you know our partners in, in the county and our other municipal partners. And I stand before you to answer any questions you may have. Okay, uh, thank you. Before we get to discussion here, uh, we have public comments. Good evening, Gerald Ward, 2135 Broadway. An impressive presentation to follow. Uh, it's going to be hard. Peanut Island is your largest acreage, uh, single purpose asset. Take a look at it, it's big. It's a material management disposal area, uh, which used to be called spoil areas, but it's a 24-7, 365 day of a year uh, facility to keep your prime purpose of maintaining navigation depths. 
you can dump spoil in there any day of the week all year long and we need to keep that in focus that that's its prime purpose so don't let any of these negotiations <laughs> with lower level governments uh, the county or fine or others color the fact that you need to uh, adhere to its prime purpose uh, it also has potential for further bulk cargo uses it has uh, the uh, requirement that maybe containment make sure that it does not impact the intracoastal waterway we're having sediment problems that have been partially solved by the aggressiveness of fine to provide uh, mega yacht and uh, LCL uh, depths all the way up to 20th Street. So we also have the protrusion to the southwest corner, which is a navigation impediment that needs to be addressed. Uh, as far as, uh, uh, lastly, the, the presentation by the city, uh, Mr. Evans gave you a lot of things to focus on, but they need further discussion. There is numerous things that can be done for profit and public benefit, which is what you need to consider in any of your additional items on this. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if I have comments. I wanted to start off. <coughs> 60 days ago when we had this discussion, we asked uh, that if anybody, whether it's the county or the city of Riviera, provide us with a proposal. And the county, of course, stepped aside at that point. Uh, what we have here now is a letter of interest. It's not a proposal. It doesn't have a lot of details, in my opinion. And uh, in addition, there was the discussion of, uh, of land, perhaps a land being available for us. Uh, I don't see that at all. So it's a wish list. It's, I mean, there's no doubt that the Peanut Island is a, it's a gem for our, uh, our county. Uh, I just I consider this to be uh, very disappointing because there's no specific details. It's just kind of what you would like to, to maybe do. That's my Yes. Yes, um, I feel the same as you do. I thought you were going to come back with a concrete swap, which you said last time you were here. That you have land all over the place, and you find something to swap us. And also, you came up with us 36 acres. When we never, ever, since I've been here, heard talked about doing away with the 36 acres. And where, what, the 36 acres is? 30, 36 acre parcel, basically this side on the east side, mm -hmm. coming down. Oh. And in relation to Mr. Ward's comment, this is the spoils area right. that we will maintain no matter what. Right, right. So, you know, I've been in touch with some people that are involved at the county, and I'm still in favor of basically just. You know, I don't want the port to spend any more time on this. Um, I just would like to see the county come in, take it as is, and I just uh, feel very comfortable that what the county is doing with Peanut Island so far is unbelievable. So all we're talking about is the bunker, no other land, and uh, the county is willing to just take it and get it done. That's, that's what I think. And I appreciate the, the city's interest. But I think that even if the county takes it over, um, that the city and the port will still be able to put some input in and make sure it comes up as a uh, top flight entertainment uh, area. Commissioner Richards. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So, Mr. Evans, are there any conditions preceded that you can share with us to, to the city taking over control, conditions preceded such as funding? That's obviously the, the 20 ton elephant in the room. With respect to that, and, and the other items articulated, is that as part of any process of property acquisition, you go through a due diligence phase and then you go through a proposal phase. Um, from the, the board standpoint, uh, we were not in favor of putting out all these different concepts and ideas as far as here's the here's where we anticipate the grant funding to come from here's where we anticipate the parcels that we've identified that would be stuff that we would work through as if, if the board wanted to entertain the possibility of negotiations to bring back those options and more specificities 
um, to be able to go through the process to put all that information together to be able to provide you a all out, all encompassing uh, uh, proposal, there's still a lot of outstanding information that we need to be able to obtain the cost for construction. How permitting will do, will the county conceivably look to making some concessions on some of the zoning or some of the stipulations in there? That, you know, from our point is when we talked about what the city cash wise can bring to the table, the board definitely did not necessarily want to assign monies to be able to say, here's 150 or 200,000, but they were inclined to accept, you know, taking on the operational expenses associated with that with the understanding that we've already talked and had conversations with grant writers to say, in the event that we're successful in obtaining some of the grant funding to do that, that the board would be more inclined to accept the matching that would have to be the, the cash that comes to the table. So there's a lot of nuances and things that would still have to be worked out, but as far as a full-fledged, this is the amount, this is the terms and conditions, Obviously, legal still has to do a lot of research. Planning and zoning would still have to do a lot of research. Our intent was to say that, hey, we're interested. These are some of the elements that we want to better develop and come to the table. And, and honestly, you know, we would love the phone call from the county to say, Riviera Beach, let's have a conversation and discussion as to how do we bring this facility to life and what are you willing to do or what are each party going to do. Uh, but. You know the conversations haven't gotten to that level yet and that's my next point um I, you know, why you, know, you mentioned this is a Hercule, herculean text and i think we all agree why go after this land as opposed to letting the big because the county go after it um and then because of its location proximity to the city enjoy the benefits is the is the work the effort time worth having the title as opposed to having access to it well uh, here here lies some of the, the challenges that we have and, and i've heard this from multiple residents is that for instance phil foster park is a park that's owned and operated by the county but i can tell you that there's copious amounts of time where residents call and say they don't have access to that particular uh, park um, and they can see from where they're driving by that there is um, opportunities for them to go in there and park. Um, there was a situation also where, you know, you have uh, Ocean Reef Park, that's another county park, and the operations there are different than the city operations. So this was an opportunity when the discussion was happening with regards to do we maintain or keep the facility open, the city of Riviera Beach never got a phone call to say, you know, hey, little brother, is there something that you can conceivably do to assist us in helping move the needle forward? So from our standpoint, having it remain shuttered and not coming to the table that say, hey, we value this and we want to see it come to life was a non-issue for us. We wanted to make sure that whomever, whether it's us, whether it's the county, whether it's another group of investors, that we value this and we want to have a proverbial seat at the table. And the only way that we can have a seat at the table was for us to aggressively take a stance and say, let's have the conversation. If, if, if having had this conversation, if two years from now you look up in the bunker um, and the, and the, and the, uh, and the uh, bunker and the Coast Guard facility are up and running and there's a county flag um, and River Beach residents are utilizing it daily, would that be a disappointment to you? How much would it be a disappointment? No, it, it, it wouldn't be a disappointment to me, but for the city, for the city um, I think we want to make sure that whomever is the entity that operates it understands that we want to have a proverbial seat at the table, whether it's the operation, whether we, we can have a say where our residents don't have a situation where they kayak, kayak up to a dock and they're turned away. Um, we, and, and this was the only way to ensure that we have a community that in some cases has never put their foot into sands on our beaches or access an island. And how powerful would it be for them to be able to get that opportunity? And it's incumbent upon us as a city to fight for those opportunities for our residents. So that's how we saw it as this isn't our opportunity to say, if there's nobody 
that is willing to say, let's lead the, the charge, we're willing to grab the flag and run it as far as we possibly can. Yeah, you know, two, two very quick and very brief comments. I've said this before, I'm only on one vote, but I don't want us to get confused and think this is a land swap, guys. You know, of course it'd be nice to get land, but our goal was to find an entity that will take care of the facility for the public benefit. Uh, my goal, and I really hope our goal at the end of the day, I hope our decision is not going to hinge whether or not it's going to give us one acre, two acres, or three lots. I mean, we currently have we have lots in the airport that we cannot utilize, and they really do need to go to a housing authority, a community development department, so affordable homes can be built for residents of the city. Let's not predicate and confuse this discussion that we must get land. I would love to have free land as well. That's not the goal here. So let's, so let's keep that in mind, please. Um, I say too, this property. I sincerely appreciate the city's effort. This is a and the station gives significant to considerations. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> um, I would like for us to uh, go into negotiations with the city. And the reason why, I know the county says this and this, but I don't see this county putting a staff person in it. I don't see the county, they've already bagged out. Uh, they don't want to put funds in it. I mean, let's be realistic. You know, the county, the county, no one has come here to tell us what they really want to do. And, and Ms. Baker, she's not on board with all this about Peanut Island and the money and the funding. And I see it's an opportunity that we can work with the city. And I think that we need to partner with the city. We need to go and talk to the county and work with the city to look at how we can modify some of the ordinance. Because rest assured, the county is not in our best interest as far as this peanut island. I, I don't I don't I don't see it. I mean, they would be happy and if you look at the residents across, they'll be happy if nothing ever happens to peanut island. No no one ever even go on that side because they don't want to see people on peanut island doing anything, to be honest. They want it to be silent. If they can put a, a sheet over peanut island on that section so they don't see it, they would do it. I don't see the county working with us. We're not in the um, uh, the museum and park business. I would like for us to do business with the city. I mean, let's get real. Unless you give them the opportunity, the county's had a chance. Every time, every, every time we come up here, the county's going to do this. Where are they? They're not going to do a dog on me. Let's get real. And as far as the committee with the county, they're really not interested in us even, even having one person in that bunker, near that bunker, because they don't want to hear the noise, they don't want a restaurant, they don't want all of this. And let me tell you something too, when this ordinance was done, and the business with the county, it was done years and years ago. We had different kind of commissioners. A lot of them think differently than the folks did years ago. There are a lot of things that we need to work with the city with to modify some of these changes. And I, I'm pretty sure a lot of the county commissioners would agree with us. Because when they made the vote years ago about no restaurant, all this other stuff, I think it passed maybe about one vote. When they were talking about peanut iron. So we need to wake up, get real. The county's not going to put any money into it. And we can wait and wait and wait. We'll be here next year. All this written. Forget it. I'm down. Madam Chair Anderson. Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Ms. Evans. I thought that was a very good presentation. Uh, well thought out and it actually delineated about you know, the direction of what needs to be done. Uh, and I've attended several meetings and going back to our previous tenants and I'm a firm believer. We were very patient, uh, we waited, uh, um, and as I said as an audience, uh, but the previous, as, as we didn't know who we were doing business with, but we played, we, we allowed that whole process to work its way out. So, uh, and also, and I thank Mr. Ward for his comments. Um, I think we can simultaneously operate uh, the um, disposal or area in which it would indicate it uh, for the dredging and for the material, as well as the kitchen community bunker. And, uh, and 
I think you said something that was profound because I was one of those individuals, me and my wife, and my wife is a city commissioner, and we were turned around when we tried to access the park. And that's something that should not happen. And this is done on a weekly basis. So uh, I don't think we need to kid anybody that this does happen. And second of all, I think we owe it to ourselves uh, on this board and in the audience to attempt to leave this place a little bit better than once we found it. And yes, it's dilapidated, yes, but it has such a rich history. So when you start automatically talking about, you know, renovating and reviving and regalvanizing, but also think about the economic benefit that this could bring to the city and to the port. And I don't think we left from our joint session saying that land swap was the only direction. I think it was an option. It wasn't the only direction. It was an option that was added and we were actually able to say, okay, let's explore. But the presentation was a very, very well thought out presentation. And second of all, if you remember, the county said they wanted a turnkey approach. They didn't want to put any money. They said, if when you get it to where it's supposed to be, then we'll take it over. And keep in mind, the organization, the watch group, I'm not sure of that, they were basically going to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. But the elephant in the room, how much input or how much control do they want of that area? And I think uh, Commissioner Dr. Ed Wright said it very eloquently, you know, it's a lot of things they don't want to see. And I don't see hampering and actually uh, depriving the residents of this city, of this county, the opportunity to see a national uh, site. That's just my thoughts. I'm definitely in favor. Thank you. Yeah, just for the record, um, the county basically um, said they didn't want to get into a bidding war with the city of Lanier Beach at the last meeting when they said, well, if they're going to offer you all this land, you know, we're not bidding against it. I've been pretty much assured that the county's willing to come back in and uh, you know, take it over, and we can basically say, county, here it is, you do what you want, turn it into the rest of Peanut Island. So that's what I'm in favor of. I've, I've been waiting for a long time basically for that county just to come in, fix it up, take it over, get the grants, spend them for tens of millions of dollars. They've got the expertise, they've done this all over the county. So at least let's open it back up and see what the county's willing to do and what the city's willing to do. And we've heard from the city and this could take years and years before anything I've got to accomplish it could take that long with the county but I think now we might as well at least talk to both entities and just say you know let's well I mean there is a solution of maybe asking because the action here is to recommend to the staff um, maybe having Riviera and the county see if they can work together towards the proposal I mean everybody seems to think that uh, what Riviera's vision is is good County does have a lot of uh, muscle. So I'm pretty sure the county is going to want to have a little show. Yeah. So, sure. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, sure. The, the county, I thought, was very clear. The county said, find the money and then give us a call. <laughs> that was very clear to me. Um, they said, actually, it was a little bit more. We'll work with you. They, they said they would write the grants and find the five million. Was fine. So it wasn't quite that. Like, I, I, as Manny would say, I think the accuracy is somewhere in between the two holes, somewhere in the middle there. So, so um, if I can do it, finish, uh, we can go with Big Brother and maybe we'll get more because they're bigger, and maybe we won't get more. I don't really think we'll get more. Uh, let's have a motion to go to the city and move forward. Madam Chair, okay. I just want to say this. Every time you come to this meeting, everybody talk about the county, the county, the county. Why was not the county administrator here to tell us the real deal and send us a letter? I mean, we don't really know. We get pieces and chips 
This person says this, they say that. They're not here to, to give us anything in writing. I mean, you don't know if they're going to do it or not. You don't know how much money they're going to put in. Have they said it? No. Some of them said, they, oh, the county's going to do this, the county's going to do that. Why the county is not here? As far as I'm concerned, we have waited and waited, and we need to do something with Peanut Island. We have an opportunity. We need to give the city a chance because the county has had a long, long time. We've gone up and down this road for years, haven't we? No. Years. No. We've gone a long time. Okay, 11 months. That's enough. The county administrator said she was not going to put any money into this. Now, all of a sudden, we hear people saying she is, she is not. She's not here. They didn't send anyone here with the letter we say, I would like for us to go to the city. And if they fail, we can always go with the county. If they want to do business with us, I don't see it. I don't see it. Madam, I'm chair. Madam chair, I know what the motion was made, but also I guess we were still in the discussion. Like in our joint session, we had our lobbyists. He basically told you, and he attended those meetings, if I'm not mistaken. Now, you don't have to believe me, but you can believe the person that was actually in the negotiation and they were in the actual room that he reiterated. And that's why I called him because sometimes my memory can, you know, uh, fade, especially, you know, if I've had a stroke. But I am not going to take, and uh, I don't know where this champion for the county is coming from because, you know, at the end of the day, they said what they said, and I respectfully agree with Dr. Dean and right. I don't see the county administrator nor <laughs> them here with a presentation saying, okay, this is the direction that we're going to do. They made it clear that they were bowing out uh, of this. That's why they're not here. Now, maybe um, you're privy to conversations with the county that I'm not, because I have not had those conversations. <coughs> so I, I'm just, I know I have a person that is standing in front of me that has actually given me a presentation, giving me a roadmap, and this is the direction I think that we go. And I don't, you know, mind seconding that motion made by Mr. Richards. Thank you. Discussion. Discussion. Well, everybody's talking about money, but. I don't see one dollar that the city's come up with either. So you're talking about counties not coming up with anything, but the city hasn't offered one dollar yet. So, you know, if three of you want to turn it over to the city, that, that's fine. But uh, just for the record, like I say, I think that the counties are shutting them out, not even giving, not even giving them an opportunity to negotiate. So, well, um, I, I don't see Louis Shedden County out of anything because if they were interested, trust me, someone would be here. And if they were really interested, they would put it on their agenda and have the county commissioners discuss it. Now let's get real. That's the bottom line. But the administrator said no, they were not putting it down in it. They were not investing. They were not going to get anybody to research. So how all of a sudden? They're going to do something. So I would like for us to go on. But uh, excuse me, Madam Chair, I just want to say this. And I honestly think, Ms., you know, Mr. Uh, Evans articulated that they are looking and they are willing to work with the county. So it's not like we're shutting them out. They said in the presentation that they're going to reach out to the county. They're going to be partners. But hey, they're going to take the lead. So I'll, I, I think uh, we need to be very careful about the choice of words and saying we're shutting them out. No, we need them as a partner. We need them to enter local agreements. We need them to work along with just like we need other agencies like the business development, the North Palm East Chamber. We need a cohesive, collective uh, collaboration. So I don't think there is no one being shut out. He articulated, he showed us, and I think this is the direction we should go in. Uh, thank you. Can you reject the motion again? The motion was actually made to work with the city of River River Beach. The motion made by Commissioner Wade Richard, seconded by Jeff Bates. Is, is, there, is there any more discussion? Is this forever or what kind of, I mean, yes. just negotiate until whatever? Is that kind of what the motion was? Well, I think it did. Uh, but I do think there should be a timeline on it uh, so we don't get into. Some years or something. Uh, <laughs> Situation. Yes. With respect to the uh, motion, can we be, please be a little bit more specific? You're asking us to sit and talk with 
sit in Premier Beach and bring it back. What is it that you'd like to see back? And when do you want to see it back? Is that, does that sound? Sure. Uh, the motion is to have staff appoint a point person and work with the city of Riviera Beach and to come back with a proposal in many days. So, that motion, Commissioner Anderson, appears to be seconding that. I second that, but I wanted to make sure and uh, maybe ask Mr. Evans because holidays are upon us. So we look well, at Thanksgiving, and uh, so I wanted to. I understand that, but uh, if you allow me, uh, do you believe that 90 days may be sufficient enough, or 120? Uh, because we are doing the holiday yeah. season, and staff does take off, and I don't want to put an undue burden on staff, knowing that they may be scheduling vacation, holidays, and whatnot. So I wanted to be realistic, and I don't want to set anyone up for failure, not our staff, as well as the city of Riviera Beach. Um, and, and thank you, uh, uh, Commissioner. I, I think um, if we're just looking at the staff component, I think 90 days would suffice. However, if I'm going to have to get engineers and, and um, uh, construction firms involved, uh, I would probably say that we're probably well over like 120 to 160 days to be able to shore up exactly the costs associated with it. Now we will start some of the incremental things that we can get um, and as part of your meetings we can bring you from the executive director and city manager status reports throughout that process as to where we are but knowing that there's so many other nuances especially if we're going to go before the board of county commissioners and ask to modify that ordinance um, there's some additional leg work that so probably you know somewhere in the realm of 120 to 160 days would probably be more suitable and, uh, this one, and the reason why i say that is if we relate this to an rfp or rfq request for proposal or request for qualifications that timeline is very strenuous and i mean if you want to go out and get a a hard bid on anything. You have to post it, you have to go through this here. So this is a big undertaking and I don't want to, you know, set our, ourselves up for failure. So I'm in favor if uh, Commissioner uh, Richards is in favor of uh, the 160 days. 
They have a restaurant. There are all sorts of things. Now, we can do some of the same things to our kid and I. So uh, take in mind, and, and it's done, it's not, they're not making money off of it, you know, some big company, but it's generating funds to keep the product going. So we need to work with the next step. Okay. okay. Um, motion is point staff to work with City of Riviera 120 days monthly up the updates. Seconded by uh, Commissioner Anderson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. J2. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, Richard Pinsky's here to give the uh, uh, Chair, Commissioner Richard Pinsky, and uh, just back from Tallahassee, <laughs> flew in on my car. The uh, local bill, I believe, is being published today, tomorrow? Today. today. Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. 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 Okay. So we get a hard copy of the newspaper. I'm going to cut out our ad. Then it gets uh, affidavit from the paper. We take that to uh, our bill sponsor, Matt Wilhite, and he takes it to bill drafting in Tallahassee. Then we uh, go through the process and sausage is made and pretty soon a bill number comes out. Hopefully in a couple of weeks we'll have all that done and then we'll actually begin. Uh, when that happens, the bill gets referenced to a committee. It will be the local infrastructure committee. And uh, I understand all five of you have volunteered to come to Tallahassee for the local bill here. That's good news to hear. Um, so, but I would like to have a commissioner well, I don't know yet. The bill has to be referenced. So it probably could be first week in January. I mean, the I'll opening week of question. session in January could be second week in January. But, uh -huh. but, uh, but uh, it would be, you know, seriously, it would be good if everybody went. It would be okay. great if it was the week of Palm Beach County days and whatnot. So, but that's what we're, that's what we're, uh, we're angling for now. I have no feedback. No one has seen the tree falling in the forest. There's no one that I spoke to that had anything to say about the bill. Uh, I didn't get pats on the back from uh, the lobbyists from Palm Beach, and uh, who was happy that we removed uh, the, uh, the tax provision. I did give you my comments that I that I uh, said at the uh, uh, at the uh, delegation hearing of why we were pulling, why we why we were proposing the tax uh, change. That then, of course, we withdrew. The uh, the only thing that's going on as far as port funding in Tallahassee, uh, perhaps Director Almir addressed it already with the resiliency report, I guess, no? Okay. Uh, that uh, sea level rise naturally would be impacting infrastructure at ports. So there is some discussion. We, we not just the FSTED money, but there is some, some other pots of money that, uh, that either in the FSTED pot or in some pot, they are, are thinking of proposing an increase in what that bond allotment would be so ports could begin to uh, what infrastructure would be needed should uh, sea level rise impact berths, seawalls, etc. That would presuppose that the port had a resiliency plan and had anticipated uh, what, what could happen. I think uh, Mr. Littlejohn did the report. So he would be uh, a typical person that you, you would bring on as a consultant to say, what should the port be doing for hardening for the next 20, 30, 40 years? And with that, I'm happy to answer uh, any questions. Mr. Sigmund? Yeah, Richard, can you explain to me that I know the bill got ordered down and you know, the majority of us were hoping that you know the millage would pass, but um, I understand by like Palm Beach, you know, they, whatever we usually ask for, they, I never really got an answer why the city of River Beach opposed it. Did you ever find out from their lobbyists or why that happened? No, but I probably won't left the building right now. Uh, he actually, uh, Jonathan Evans showed up at the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, he did not submit a card. He's the only one who showed up. Uh, I had a brief conversation with him when he did show up and asked him what he was doing there. He said, he felt in talking to his elected officials felt as though it would be a negative impact upon the residents, the taxpayers. I 
explain the average cost uh, would probably be somewhere between twenty to twenty five dollars per household. Uh, and I said the impact of the port being down after the insured money comes in uh, and after the state kicks in whatever they're going to kick in, and we have plenty of examples of that being woefully inadequate. Uh, at best case scenario, according to our port staff, the port would probably still be operating at maybe half operation level, and we, we, we would need some funding to get back up to full operation. What that meant to the 2,500 jobs, and probably half of which live in Riviera Beach, what that meant to the multiplier, people eating, working around Riviera Beach, would have a far more devastating impact. I, patting myself on the back, he's not here to correct me. I think I made an impression upon him, <laughs> and uh, and he did not submit a card. So I don't know what, what I can't say he was opposing it, but he did show up, ask questions, and I did the best I could to explain it. Uh, thank you for all your uh, diligent work and uh, your navigating through um, sometimes contentious waters, but I, I definitely want to give you all the accolades that you've done and also being able to help and knowing when to pull you know, the uh, trigger as well as remove the verbiage. Um, I also feel a lot of calls uh, indicating uh, that there was a lot of misinformation, misnomers that were put out there. Uh, and I've expressed to our board director as well as uh, uh, that we need to tell our own story. And I think uh, we can always, you know, do Monday night quarterbacking and singing that what things could have or should have been done. I think we need to understand how important it is. And I think we have a definitely a competent and she's shown us some, but we need to tell our story. And I've expressed to uh, our board director, as well as our, you know, uh, Mr. Pinsky and I have had this conversation, is notifying those cities within our port district how valuable and what it meant. And if we've done our due diligence in actually explaining that we were not taxing, this is just to bring and clean up our chart. Just as important, and like I'll say this again, just as important was to change manager to director just as it was important as it was to update our, you know, our compensation that we received, uh, I think it was more important to make sure we left the city in a viable and a financial, you know, ability to recover in the event of a catastrophic storm or sea level rise or anything that may have happened. Uh, and this is not the first time, from my understanding, correct me wrong, this bill has failed and hoping you know, we are very optimistic that this will pass. So I, I just want to, I understand the political climate, I understand uh, you know, <coughs> the different nuances, but I don't want us to get away from why we sit in this seat. And we sit in the seat to protect the interests of the poor. Uh, and sometimes I think that can be skewed about you know, who we're championing for. But I sit in the seat to protect the interests of this port in long term, and also the interests of the county as well as the city. Because if something was to happen, a Category 5 or anything of that nature was to hit this port, do you think that our vendors are, are just going to sit around and wait for us to rebuild? No, they might go somewhere else. And we would be able to attract so you're talking about lost jobs, lost revenue, lost economic development throughout this kind of so it will be devastating. So I do think we need to really understand and uh, see where we are uh, on this board as it you know calls to making sure that we leave this board in a better financial situation. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pinsky. Is it not true that if we increase the cap to whatever, say ten million, we still need to have a, a referendum? With uh, the voters, right? Is that correct? Correct, and I don't know if, the, if my remarks made it into the packet uh, they or did. not. Yes. So, uh, so the answer is yes. First, to, to Commissioner Anderson, uh, you, particularly Commissioner uh, Richards and Commissioner Sicklin, you gave me that flexibility yes. to, should I be in a situation, I can make that judgment call when to fold them, when to hold them. <laughs> so, uh, so that's why we. We pulled it. I, you know, I couldn't. I didn't have a vote count until 
things got a little out of hand that last 24 hours, and that's when I said it's in our best interest not to do this. There's other things in there, so so to clear that, thank you. But yes, uh, and part of the remarks was the reason why it's never come up was because after the cap was put on in 1974, uh, simultaneously was the change in the Florida Constitution that said a special district would have to go to referendum, which we tried to explain and make that case, but uh, notwithstanding, there is there is still no motivation to allow us to have that option to even go to the voters. The uh, delegation members that I explained one-on-one -on -one to that to uh, understood it, wish they had had that information. By that time, you know, things were just out of hand, but, uh, but had they been told that side of the story, that all we wanted was the option to take it to the voters, it would have been a, a different result. But by that time, the, the water was too, too much. Well, I was there, and you did a great job. And I'd like to have a shout out to uh, Steve Rick, uh, Matt Wilhite for uh, sponsoring it. Absolutely. So that's good. It was unanimous uh, also. Yep. Madam Chair, I just want to say one, 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 two things. Um, one, as far as taxi, I don't see where we can have a tax. And the reason why I say that is because we are a district. And being a district, and we're not county-wide, it makes a significant difference. You'll be very shocked how one person would have a fit if their taxes went up five dollars, and the folks across the street don't have to pay the five dollars. I mean, you see, the Port, Port St. Louis is a good example. I think it was three dollars they had to pay in order to get a trauma heart center to, to have a hospital with a uh, uh, trauma center. They didn't want to pay three dollars, and they ended up flying all the way to St. Mary. They didn't pay three dollars. So I think our biggest problem would be is people have we're not countywide, therefore the folks who are taxed, they never vote for it because the man across the street is not taxed. And I think that's our problem. Uh, unless the port boundaries, you said something interesting of it, I think. Unless we expand it to the entire county, then you have a different story. But as long as we're a district, I don't see it. That's my thing. Thank you. Uh, on the resiliency report, what's your recommendation? In preparation one way or the other, uh -huh. whether it's in this year's budget or you prepare for it in next year's budget, but you should certainly be preparing for some sea level plan, sea level rise plan, calling it a resiliency plan, but there is no doubt, and we heard testimony this week in Tallahassee, it is increasing uh, exponentially more than what they had thought. I think it's already been six inches in the last 12 years, uh, and and that six inches keeps getting added on to. So depending on what happens worldwide, but the the, the 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 graph is going like this right now. So whatever you think is happening in your slips right now, you have to project 30, 40 years in advance uh, and begin to to uh, prepare for that. I believe that was a port council issue, and so probably Director Al. Al has got some update, but there is a, a, a report that was done. Uh, but the recommendation is definitely <laughs> begin to prepare, whether it's in the next year or so. But we should have some sort of a, a resiliency plan. Uh, Director, I just want to uh, mention that let's not forget that we can do anything we want, and obviously we'll be protecting ourselves. But we're just as good as what our neighbors do. Otherwise, the water's going to come from from either side. So let's let's. Please understand that. I'm not against it, obviously, but it takes more than just one individual raising or bringing up your uh, your purse, and then then what happens with the guy next door? That's the water's going to gush right in, and that's and that's something I've, I've talked to Jeff Little John, and there really isn't an answer. So, are we talking a zillion dollars for everybody to rise that, or raise their? I think it's. it's well, Mr. Pinsky is suggesting is that we at least kind of have a strategy. Oh, absolutely. So, absolutely. No, 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 so no. Are we Before you get funding, the first question that Department of Transportation or DEP anybody's going to say, have you done your plan yet? So we know funding is going to be coming at some point. Uh, and it's not just the births. Uh, this building, what is going to happen to the foundation of this building? Uh, and that is what's happening in Dade, Broward, Monroe County right now. 
uh, Army Corps is looking at Little Orange Creek, Little River. I mean, that's exactly the gazillion dollars. That's exactly what they're looking at. So, are you, are you, is your plan to, to commence uh, developing a strategy, or what's? Well, my plan is to continue to talk with Jeff Little John and the Florida Force Council to see where the force are going. But it's 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 very infant stages. There is no easy solution other than pouring all kinds will, of money. Your goal is to have right? oh force yeah. yeah. In the next Do we have time year or what? Uh, I mean, Twenty-four hours. <laughs> Twenty-four hours. <laughs> Twenty-four hours up the next year. Let me let me find out. Okay, if you could just let us I'm, know. And I'll bring back some sort of report under my executive report next okay. uh, November. You. One good thing is that we'll have. Deeper drive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again for uh, stopping by. Now we're on to J2. Thanks for your patience. Commissioners, agenda item J2 addresses the force requirements to perform fiscal year 2020 quarter water quality monitoring force for the Department of Environmental Protection to satisfy the requirements of the FDBE multi-sector permit for stormwater discharge associated with industrial activity. In accordance with the attached work, work order, Earth Systems, who is our CCNA selected firm, has provided a proposal and scope of work for required sampling events. Earth Systems pricing has been consistent for the last six years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we have a public comment, so Mr. Ward, before we go, Board, 2135 Broadway. Obviously, this is a relatively simple item, and I expected to hear more in relation to the joint meeting on the 30th of September, where you made a point of stormwater to the City Council of Riviera Beach. Uh, the Lewis Bowie Sky Pass, uh, you hired a manager in 1995, and 96 uh, that became a big push to construct her sky pass uh, in the process you had to apply for permits in the florida department of environmental protection recognized that the port had been deficient in accomplishing stormwater control stormwater management so there was a study done which i had at the last meeting uh, and uh, uh, resulted in permitting and it had to address the discharges from the port uh, and you basically have Riviera Beach Heights which was connected up back in the late 60s uh, with an outfall through the port and that's all the, the high level uh, residential and some industrial to the west you fortunately have the DOT in the 710 uh, four laning uh, accomplishing a lot of management for water quality of that area. Uh, Riviera, uh, the Sky Pass itself generated the permit. The, you took over from the DOT, the bridge area, and um, you have your major port operations area, plus you have the areas that you condemned for accomplishing the Sky Pass and uh, 11th Street, Avenue C, and uh, 13th Street all added tributary areas. So uh, the court cases uh, have stipulated settlements that require you to accept these orders, and I think you need to be fully advised before you start to branch out and say, well, let's get Riviera Beach to fund some of this. Now, you obviously have the stormwater fees you're paying and negotiations is appropriate for you to do that. But the 25,000 is, is an entree for what uh, Commissioner Anderson just talked about, how we need to do a, tell a better story about things. And maybe you have done good. I haven't seen the data, although I get every permit modification you do. But I, I think it would be very interesting to see that it, maybe you have a success story. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Further 
Item J3, at the June 27, 2019 commission meeting by agenda item J1, the port selected DCF engineering consultants to perform, for perform inspections of buildings 11, 12, and 13. ECF uh, consultants has provided a proposed work order for step one, beginning the inspection and assessment and evaluation of the buildings, um, and that item is attached. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, just let the record show that this motion and last motion of uh, Mr. Sicklin is J4. J4, the cooling coils for the air handling units uh, 2A and 2B have served their useful life and not performing the specification. A lack in performance of the cooling coils results in loss of cooling and humidity control in the maritime office complex in the pasture terminal building. Replacement of these cooling coils is required to extend the life of the air conditioning for the affected spaces. This work is covered under the train USA service contract of 01-2017-3. Only one make a motion. Um, do we have a maintenance agreement with them or do we maintenance of these in-house? We have a maintenance agreement with them and it is attached as part of the uh, this agenda. All right, and also uh, the water is being treated, uh, the chill water water that's being treated by a company, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, all in favor? All right. All right. J5. J5, last, last commission meeting, we spoke about a negotiation with Johnson Brothers for the addition of the Berth One Shore Power Electric after we had trouble with bids on that one. Uh, the port's been unable to complete that negotiation at this time. Uh, time is of the essence, therefore, we're requesting that the Port Commission's patient and approval for the following. The port will continue negotiations with Johnson Brothers to reach an agreement on cost proposed for Berth One Shore Power Electric while simultaneously preparing appropriate RFP for advertisement and rebidding of this work to local electric contractors. If negotiations stall with Johnson Brothers, uh, or we can't find one that's acceptable, we'll bring the change or to the commission if we do. Otherwise, we'd like to go after that RFP. Uh, motion to accept. Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, new business. Okay, going. Commissioner back on uh, August the 27th, the classic of left on charter to um, our Norwegian cruise lines. The idea was at that point that the classic is volume of uh, passengers will be added to the celebration. Fortunately, if you recall back in September the 1st, we had a hurricane called Dorian and we did a job out course in uh, Grand Bahamas. As such, they were not, this is the celebration, was not able to uh, provide any sort of uh, steady service. With that said, Mr. O'Neill uh, came to the port, actually sent an email asking for a waiver of any charges, and the charges that I'm referring to is the $12,000 per missed sailing. When he uh, approached me, uh, he had mentioned that he, in fact, had talked to everybody and everybody was on board. And I told him, well, I'm not, because I'm going to have my head handed to me if I go in there and not ask for anything. So a, uh, a somewhat heated uh, negotiation ensued. And what he and I have agreed to is to present to you an alternate, and that is to charge him $150,000, which would have been slightly over $300,000 is what he owes, but half of it. Uh, in equal installments, that is one twelfth, starting in the month of February. So that would be the the, uh, the ask. Uh, is there a discussion? Yeah, yes. Commissioner Bacon. Uh, I'll just say with this thing. Um, how does that impact our budget, and how can we maneuver the money around? I mean, Our revenue for the fiscal year that it covers would be dropped. By about two hundred thousand um, dollars, the one hundred fifty thousand would be recorded as income, and we would just set up a receivable, collect it over twelve months. But our income would drop by the two hundred thousand at the board's discretion. Now, my question is, uh, don't we give them something for uh, marketing? Can we um, swap it out or something? The the marketing contribution we make is based upon a passenger count. 
So when there's no passenger sailing, there's no marketing contribution paid. Yeah, but once they start sailing, and they have started sailing, <coughs> then how would that uh, impact? I, mean, if I would work with their uh, CFO, and the monthly amount could be deducted from the marketing that we pay them, rather than swapping checks. It would be a matter of what's most convenient for them. Okay, so uh, the 150 that we have given up, we can absorb that in such a that you just said it was 200. And then that was Yeah, their their total at 12,000, as the executive director said, is slightly over three, depending on the exact count. It's somewhere about 320, 330. So if we collect 150, we'll be dropping our income by about 180,000 at the board's discretion. Can we make it up somewhere else? I guess you said there's a lot to make up. Um, We're on the I price. can't commit on what kind of revenue we can generate next year. I understand. Thank you, Madam Chair. Man, I know we did speak about this, but let me ask this question. The missed sailings, are, are, please confirm, please confirm, the missed sailings are not solely hurricane-based, am I correct? No, missed sailing, of course, you know, is classic of being relocated <coughs> to another port, Seattle. And do we know whether the relocation to Seattle was purely humanitarian? No. Or do we know whether they charged? For I do not know, but obviously they won't move we ship from here to Seattle without them uh, maybe making money. So let me ask you this, and I, I know we passed we passed a measure that provided them some level of relief because they the thought when Neil said the thought was by going down to one ship, the the passengers from the ship that would be gone would go on the on the first ship and there'd be no net loss. Correct. So we had quite a bit of consideration and discussion and we passed a matter to provide some level of relief. So that is not happening and they're now proposing something else. No, if I may, yeah. if you recall, uh, the celebration could not go back to uh, Freeport for literally for about three, three and a half weeks. As such, no matter how many bookings they would have had on Classica, they basically had nowhere to go. And, and therefore, that's one thing, again, he's asking for, he was asking for a weaver of all 27 sailings. And that's why I simply want to understand what sailings were missed because of the hurricane. Well, of course. Uh, as of, roughly. Well, uh, it had at least 18. The sailings of the classic were missed. No, no, not the classic. The, uh, the classic was 27, but the celebration. Well, celebration only went back to Freeport twice until the regularly scheduled began, what, last so, Saturday or so. But is the ask for greater relief than that? than the missed sailings because of the hurricane, or is the ask solely related to the missed sailings because of the hurricane? It's basically the ask is, his thinking was, commissioners, that as a result of not being able to sail on the celebration, he felt that there was no way that he could put classic as volume on celebration. As such, it's a runabout way of asking, hey, we weren't even sailing, therefore, uh, please waive the entire charges, to which, I, as previously mentioned, there was no way I could have come here and, and, and made that request. So yes. is the answer generally yes? I don't my understanding is generally So that, is, that, is, that, is that regulated? Is that correct, Paul? With respect to the celebration and humanitarian efforts, our agreement with them does not allow us to build them $12,000 a day. We can only collect the 12000 on sailings where they're charging passengers. Oh, so there okay. is also, so there's that's nothing. Big, that's the big, big, that's big, that's big, that's big that's difference. difference. That's the difference. So with the celebration, there'll be no charges. Um, with the Classica, there was, that was not related. That's what the, the, the executive director is asking because the celebration did not go over and they had no opportunity to move the passengers to it, asking for relief on their $320,000. So. Yes. So in essence, what you're saying is, regardless of what, the celebration was still here for about two and a half weeks, just sitting. More than that. Well, it went over on its own dime for humanitarian right. efforts. And so he's asking for relief for the celebration. He's asking for the classical, but still he needs right. relief for the celebration. A ship is a ship is a ship, so it's a, you know what I'm saying? So it boils down to, so this would be considered 
our contribution toward the <coughs> Bahamian ethic in a real development directed kind of sort of way. Yeah. So Maggie, as the as the E D, are you recommending this? Yes, I am. E D we trust. Well, I'm the, the numbers guy. How do you feel, Paul? Talk to us. I support the executive director. I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. I know you have to say it. Madam Chair, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're putting him on the spot in front of his boss. But um, That's okay. I just want to, and I, and I wholeheartedly uh, agree with what the executive director is especially in one of his dire straits. Um, so this is only germane, and I just want to make sure that this is clear. This is only germane for the mis-sellings of the classic, correct. Uh, and I know there was some uh, advertisement or, you know, some, uh, well, it indicated that they may have charged. I just want to make sure that uh, they may have charged for it was some news fights out there. I just want to make sure that, that was not the case. We were, we are looking into. We are, we understand that there may have been one of those cruises where there was a four hundred dollars charge per passenger. I don't know if that was something that was going to be donated on the other side. We need to look into it. But if there is one one of those humanitarian cruises where they charged for, we'll get back to the executive director. And we can handle that differently. But if they did not charge anything. Our contract does not allow us to build one. Okay. All right. And uh, I'm just, just going to ask you, are, you know, from a standpoint, from a fiscal standpoint, do you feel okay with this? He said he's doing it. I'm asking him. He's not going to be putting him on the spot. I'm From an accounting standpoint. I would why, say, why is, do you have the answer for it if we go up there? I would <laughs> say that it's the right decision to make from a business standpoint right. for a good client. I support it. So you want to make a motion? I make a motion that uh, we accept the uh, agreement made by Mr. Mayor to the uh, Bahamas celebration for the Miss Sally. Um, that's my motion. So you want a second? Any discussion? Further discussion? All I want to say is that they need us, Regina. You know, and, you. at the end of the day, if we don't try to help them, I mean, if they go belly up, I mean, we're going belly up. So I mean, <laughs> we, we, I mean, that's 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 reality. I mean. I mean, if they go out of business, I have to file bankruptcy. That's what I meant by the other way. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Those. Thank you. Thank you. We have a uh, couple comments. Mr. Ward. Good evening. For the last time, Gerald Ward, 2135 Broadway, Riviera Beach. Uh, I would uh, say we've got. Uh, it was interesting. I put down planning. I'm really talking about major planning for the future. Uh, obviously, the resilience issue came up, and Mr. Pinsky's right that if you don't factor that into planning, you're going to uh, hit a roadblock. Slip number two is up for rehabilitation and Obviously, you need to have a study now, not later, on the width that you want to, to design the reef have to slip to. That's probably one of your most important factors. Uh, number two, the world is getting to panel containers. The box is different. Uh, the Middle East is advancing the technology on that. and. Tropical could gain lots of additional space. We can make the port much more efficient by going to more modern uh, handling versus straddle lift cranes and so forth. So that's a second issue. The third issue is navigation safety. Uh, you went through an uh, excruciating uh, five year environmental impact statement and then an appropriation by Congress to authorize. Uh, the 80 some million dollar changes which have run into a big wall that isn't going anywhere. But there are elements of navigation safety that need to be continually addressed and 
you need to put these at a higher priority because of your basic responsibility as port commissioners. Fourth, uh, slip number two was designed to be <coughs> so that you could go through the slip, extend the slip, go into the western area with an additional basin channel to take uh, vessels of, say, less than uh, three fathoms to uh, accommodate more transportation. At, at the time we did that, we were thinking about mega yachts. I don't think mega yachts are going to be the port's savior because we were able to dredge the intracoastal northward. And you will have the expansion westward so that you can take advantage of additional berthing for more shallower crafted <coughs> vessels. Uh, it's time to get planning on the forefront, and I think uh, Mr. Pensky did push you with this resilience, which is a simple part of planning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Congressman Board. Uh, I'd just like to thank staff for all the hard work that they've done to put in um, uh, since we last had our board meeting. And understand uh, my comments uh, come because I'm just trying to make sure that the best interest of the board is at the forefront. Uh, and I, you know, reiterate that I believe, uh, you know, we shouldn't let title dictate um, how one commissioner is treated from the other. And that's just my honesty. You know, that's just how I feel. Uh, but uh, I want to continue to work in a cohesive uh, manner to make sure that we get to the end goal, and that's the purpose of the court. Uh, but with that being said, um, I commend each and every one for what you do and, and how you operate uh, and look forward to, uh, you know, in this endeavor. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Richards. Nothing further. All right, meeting adjourned. Uh, oh, thank you. Oh, sorry. We need to set next meetings. Uh, and also, I've been uh, asked to request executive session uh, with uh, Robert Wilkins, Donald McNell, and myself uh, at some point after the commencement of the next regular meeting. So we would, is it planned now to have it start at 3.30? Is that what I do? Okay. So we'll start the meeting at 3.30? Next meeting is... Twenty first. Um, are you out? Yeah, no. don't we have the uh, no, no, AAPA? The AAPA, I believe, is the twentieth and the twenty-first. Plus, you will be out. No, no, I'm out on the twenty-second. I'm here on the twenty-first. Okay. I'll be, I'll be, I won't be here. Okay. Yeah, I won't be here either. I won't be here on the fourteenth. Let's have it on that Friday. Which day? 22nd. Uh, oh, you, oh, no, we can't have it. That's yeah, the 19th. 19th. Is it 19th? What about the 18th? I can't do the. Uh, yeah, I'm out of town the 18th or the 20th. After the 21st. And I'm out from the 19th to the 22nd. What about the first day? It's Thanksgiving. Oh, 28th. Good thing. Can't do that yet. What about the 22nd? Oh, no, he's gone. He's gone. So that means we have to bump it up a week So we can't do it the 18th or 19th? Who's doing the 18th? Oh, wait a second. 14th? What about the 15th? Are you doing the 15th? I'm here at the 14th. I can't do the 14th. What about the 15th? Right. I can't do the 14th. 15th. I can do it the 13th. Okay, 15th. You want to do the 13th? Okay. Yeah, I'm out. 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 I'm